I'm in Houston right now, you know, visiting family and whatnot. Oh, yeah. He's a bum, then. You definitely, Come yeah, on. go out Houston. There ain't nobody out there. You getting cooked out there. Hey, don't, don't. We don't got to do this right now, bro. We all know that we can put money on the game. We got, a, we oh, got people I'm, I'm watching. Down. Don't, don't spoil you me with a good time. You we know, got the people paper, watching right paper now. Paper ain't bro. a problem. You hear me? Come on, man. Yeah. Man, when your leg going to be better, man? You've been making that excuse about two years now. No, no. I just got the surgery, dog. They told me about about seven more months. I'm I'm back on your top. Yeah, right, bro. You wasn't even giving me no workout when you had a good leg. You're lying, bro. Jumper, you are lying. bad. Jumper, and then bad. Then here's the thing. Every <laughs> time we play ball, you, 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 you luckily got on my team. Yeah, right. You can score on me if I, if someone paid you, bro. Bro, I'll put my life on the line, dog. <laughs> You saw you what see, I did to him, five hundred, bro. Y'all, bro, light but you out see, here. you see what I did the same day, cook y'all. Yeah, y'all light out. Yeah, we just playing pig, bro. Play, play me competitively, bro. Neo, Neo, tell him what happened. Tell him really why your ankle and your knee messed up. What happened to you when I pulled that left crossover and yanked it back, and you <laughs> let him know? Cap. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, okay. Captain you, Phillips. <laughs> you get you giving game in here. Or you just you just playing around. You serious or curious, man? I was playing, but we could we could all give him a little bit of game real quick. Nah, you know? nah, that's cool. I just wanted to tap in and check on you, bro. Make sure you was good, man. Oh yeah, you know you know the game is light. I could give him game all day. No, I'm nah, it's good. It's good. I just wanted to say what's up and check on you, bro. That's all. Yeah, no, I'm good, bro. Everything. When you when you head back? I'm headed back in the morning. Okay, back. Yeah. You got I, you I, in the new crib yet? Uh. Yes and yes and no. So All right. I just we got, ain't gotta talk about that on the lot. I was just gonna say I, I need to see the new crib whenever it comes. Oh yeah, you you know you know the crib crazy though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. You know. I, I, I see you was telling me about the blueprints and whatnot. I said okay. Oh, yeah, it, it's 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 foolish. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, we'll, right. we'll, we'll we'll talk about it, bro. All right, but I'll catch you. Hey, hey, you sure? They said get a game. You sure? You good? J J JP the must don't got no game, y'all. We let him go, hey, man. I, I, thought heard, he was, I, I thought he was the coach. Hey, I heard. Well, look, look, we just give him three bro. pieces a piece. You give him a game, I give him game. That's it, man. Something like y'all. You know, Neo a gatekeeper, bro. Like he don't like giving out game. He really be gatekeeping, bro. Nah, nah he be nah. gatekeeping, bro. <laughs> I get, I give all the game, bro. Hey, yeah, I, I, I'm one of the reasons why you in the digital game, bro. <laughs> See, right. hey, we we should we should tell that story real quick. We should tell yeah, that story. So, guys, so we was, so you want to tell or you want me to tell? I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell it. All right, go ahead. So, right, guys, before you start, real quick, yo, share this live out, y'all, with three people. Comment the word done. Use this little arrow. Matter of fact, in the comments, don't even share it. Tag three people. And say, yo, come in here. Come listen to this. Tag mm -hmm. three people very quickly. Say, come listen to this. Because I'm sure y'all going to pick up something that will probably help you make some money. thousand percent. So I got to tell y'all how Neo likes to motivate people because it's very inspiring how he does it, right? So first of all, I get a call from uh, Leon who runs my ads and runs Halani's ads. She, he says, man, Halani and Jason about to pay 15000 for somebody to like go look at their Shopify I want you to go do it for them. I go, I give them the sauce. They do a million in their first year. I said, okay, cool. So then I see Jason and Neo and him 500 posting every Friday at Top Golf and this and that. So I hit Jason. I say, Jason, bro, y'all boys don't got no young blood in there. Y'all don't really got no sauce. Y'all got all the old head game in there. Y'all ain't got no young sauce in the building though. So he invite me and then I go, <laughs> oh, that's hard, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you didn't see my, you never seen my office? Nah, I ain't seen the office, office. yet. Oh yeah, office crazy. Multiple oh, yeah, cameras David, up. Just put that bro. together for you, didn't he? No, no. Here y'all go with that. <laughs> Man, you ain't put this together. Yeah, my home <laughs> office crazy. Nah, Bob right. Boar, we we hooked up. You know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah, you got a couple awards over there. I see you. Yeah, it sound like. But go ahead, finish the story. I'm gonna sit down over here. All right, bet so. I, then they, I say, uh, Jason, you got to invite me to the mastermind because, you know, I see Neo, him 500, Jason, everybody. So he invite me one week. I sit down to this boy, Neo, next to Neo. The this is my first time ever meeting Neo. I sit down to Neo. Neo look at me. He said, what's your name? I said, Justin. He said, what you do? I said, I sell stuff on Shopify. He was like, how much money you make this month? That's the first thing, you know, Neo about the cash, man. Neo going to get to the bag. So I told him, man, I made about 600000 this month. He, I said, he said, um, did you teach anybody how to do it? I said, no, I just got a brand, bro. Like, you know, I do the brand stuff. He was like, 
oh, well, that's kind of selfish, bro. Like, you you making all that money, but you ain't teaching nobody how to do it? Like, damn, bro, what's up with you? And I was like, oh, okay, that's what type of time we on. So he said, look, bro, go ahead, write you an ebook and just write down everything you know about e-commerce. If you really do it in 14 days, then I'll show you how to run the ebook play. I said, okay, cool. So I wrote it. And then Neo, he thought that that was just going to like, you know, I'm not going to do it. He ain't going to hear back from me, this and that. So then I hit him back <laughs> and then I wrote the whole thing. And then um, he was like, all right, so this is how you do it. Drop it on your birthday, this and that. So I drop it on the birthday. Bands like also got me sparked and seeing how the digital, the digital game works. So then I'm like doing research. I'm like, oh, okay, they do webinars. They do master classes. They do challenges. And then I got into all of that. And then that's when everything started to go really crazy. So Neil, one of the, the reasons that I jumped into the digital game and started taking it really seriously. So if I wouldn't have wrote that ebook, a lot of lives would have been changed, bro. That's a fact, bro. And I really remember it. And y'all, one of my strategies is I do that to everybody. I'm like, yo, I challenge you to go do it. And most people don't go do nothing with it. Like 99% of them, they won't. That boy hit me back and it was done. I'm like, dang. Like that boy, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to y'all. This dude wanted the hardest working dude. Like when he set his mind to something, dog, he go in the warehouse or wherever he go. He yeah. do not leave out till it's done. I mean, he may not <laughs> eat for a week. I'm telling you, he <laughs> go in that joint and consider it done. Like when he Look. set his mind on something, y'all, it's going to go get it done. So Look, and Neil the same way, bro. Yeah. Hey, I, bro, I, I be commending Neil because I'll go into a live bull Neo sweating in there, giving him work. I'm like, yo, Neo like got some like most of the game that you hear, you know, Neo's giving the game to a lot of people. So yeah. Man, I, oh, I seen your million dollars worth of game joint too. Oh yeah, love, love, yeah. You know that's my second joint. Oh yeah. okay. How did how's it going? Uh, it it isn't going as good as the first one. I think the episode wasn't the best episode for it. Okay. Um, but it is a uh, you you know we yeah. we we everything that I do, I'm always going to get what I need to get out of it. I right. think so many people will become more successful if you found how to maximize on everything you do, even when it doesn't do what you anticipated to do. Yeah, that's a Like, fact. you got to go ahead and figure out what is the silver lining in this? How do I get the most out of it? And, y'all, yeah. if, if you make up that mindset, y'all, of it got to work or it got to work, like, we got to stop giving ourselves excuses. Like, I watch uh, JP, like, he set his mind on something. He go get it done, and he commit. And here's another strategy, like, a lot of y'all tap in with him, but he don't gate gatekeep info he give a lot of game like a lot of you're trying to figure out how to build your brand a lot of you're looking how to get be known give away your best stuff for free mm -hmm. like he'll come on here and he will sauce y'all up and it will help y'all go get some money that's mm -hmm. how he got to our meeting we don't even bring nobody to the mastermind J just like yo this dude gotta come he gave me the sauce he went <laughs> in there and gave him all of the sauce so i'm telling everybody here is Start giving away your best stuff for free and stop yeah. always looking for a cost. So I yeah. was in uh I, I flew out to support my guys EYL yesterday, and I'm telling you, it's three, four thousand people in a room mm. for a year or two, bro. All they did was just give away free game. It's something yeah. called the law of reciprocity. It's mm -hmm. gonna come back to you at some point in time. Yeah. They went and gave so much game. Now, anytime they make a drop. They're they can flood thousands of people in any city in America because they led first with value versus to pay. Yeah, and then the longer that you can hold out on the value, the bigger the ask that you can make in the end. So yeah. you give game for two, three years, and then you can command whatever you want. And then when you make one ask, everybody going to be like, bro, you gave me game for three years, changed my life. I just want to give you money just because. Like, I appreciate yeah. you. But here's the thing, though. How do you hold out if you really need the money now? Like, what do you recommend? Because somebody like, yo, I want to try that. But they're like, bro, I need this bread, right? Like, I need this money today. So, I mean, you can do that by, like, I think that you can give more value than the amount of money that you're asking for, too. Because, like, for instance, like, all of the game that we put out on a daily basis, if we ask for, like, $27 for an ebook or something, it's going to be like, bro, you didn't change my life with just your free information. Why would I not? So I think the way that you can combat that is just give your best information away for free, like Neo said, because then when you do ask, they're going to feel obligated to give you money. And then also they're going to be wondering, dang, he giving away this type of game for free. What is it going to be like when I pay for this information? So, mm. yeah, Powerful. Bro. Powerful. Bro. Mm -hmm. uh, what's three, three must-read books for people? 
three must read books number one is breaking the habit of being yourself by joe dispenza by far one of the best books i ever read number two ego is the enemy i've read that book at least seven times and number three i probably say no excuses by brian tracy what's your favorites bro my favorites uh i gotta go with a better way to live live by og mandino that's one of my favorites uh mm -hmm. think and grow rich yeah. that's a classic and the book that really started me in this was think and grow rich and seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen yeah. covey and yeah. the biggest takeaway I got from his book is it talks about beginning with the end in mind. Yeah, so people got to start start focusing on where you're going and not where you are. Hey, Nia, I want you to talk about this real quick because I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, bro, the reason why even you, like, I believe that people, some people are just like, you know, destined for success. Like, I believe that you're one of those people, I'm one of those people. But I think that people might get admitted and screwed because you've been in the game 14 15 years and i think that most people get it confused because it's like the only thing neo did differently than everybody else was he didn't quit like 14 15 years chugging away at the same thing you bound to be successful and i think too many people don't they switch something doesn't work for six months they go do something else something doesn't work for six months they go do something else but you really what, what was your mindset like to just do the same thing for 15 years bro hey bro listen to me bro like like people i stop really talking about mindset all the time because people look at it as fluff bro but they don't really get it bro it is the freaking it is the way like i got for those who don't know i don't got time to get into it but y'all for those dabbing in jail since i was two for committing murder i got kicked out of high school i got kicked out of college i got fired from 10 jobs one of the best two of the best moments of my life was me my mom sending me to a school where there's only 50 black people there that was one of the best things that could have happened to me because one of my favorite quotes is once your mind is expanded to a new concept or idea it's hard to go back to its original way of thinking so I used to mm -hmm. see all of these people, like, I'm spending the night in my homie's crib, bro. Pool house, four-wheelers. I'm from West Philly. We riding four-wheelers. <laughs> we riding them in the streets. Right. We riding four-wheelers. We riding them on his acres. Crazy. Right. I'm spending the night at my man crib. We will walk out the back of his crib. John Durant, walked through the woods. Now we have Beth Sickles' house, theater in the crib. So that was my first eye-opening, like, oh, it's something more than this drug-infested neighborhood. Yeah. Second thing was I, I worked at the private airport, which was my last job where I seen billionaires and bil millionaires and billionaires get off these planes every day. I, mm -hmm. I tell y'all, I tell all of that to say, and somebody put in the chat, right, exposure. You got to find a way to expose yourself to someone or something mm -hmm. that is better than you or, or just has inspired you. So me working at them airports, I said, I'm going to become one of these businessmen or businesswomen one day and, and, and be something great. Fast forward, I got yeah. fired. But when <laughs> I got fired from there, JP, I didn't have no other. I already got kicked out of high school. I already got yeah. kicked out of college. <laughs> I had no other choice but try business. Right. But I said to myself 15 years ago, bro, it has to work or it has to work. And I also said to myself, I am, I, I am mentally unemployable. Mm. Ment which meant I don't care what. Everything that went wrong in my business, I didn't ever look at it like, yo, I got to go back to a job. Right. Every, I'm talking about everything that went wrong. I've never looked back and said, well, that didn't go to this plant. Let me go back to a job. I never thought in the last 15 right. years, this isn't working. Maybe I got to try something else because right. I mentally removed the idea of another option. Mm -hmm. So it was either entrepreneurship has to work or death. Right. <laughs> and it has to be that severe in you. I'm talking about yeah. it got to be that. It got to be in you, dog. Like, it was, right. it, it got to be that. Like, I felt it. Mm -hmm. So, it's been 15 years, bro, every bruise, every hurdle, I just look at it as a part of the process. Right. What was what was one of the biggest things that you feel like almost set you back? Like, was there ever a moment? Because I know a lot of people, I mean, they be DMing me like, bro, I'm really just ready to quit, bro. Like, I've been trying every single thing. It didn't work. Was there ever a moment where you was just like, damn, I'm getting my ass beat with this stuff? Like, what was that? And what'd you pull on to get out of that moment? Bro, that crap was every day, bro. I mean, we outside <laughs> doing, bro, we doing junk removal jobs. I'm working on a fruit truck, bro, till seven. Yeah. I right. come home done. I, I live with my grandma, y'all, till I was 24, just so y'all know. Like, mm -hmm. stay at home as long as you can. For those right. who look like, it ain't cool that you go out on your own. You can do I stayed. I went back, moved home with my grandmama. 
So right. I was like 23, 24 if I got right. out on my own, just so y'all know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, I used to come home. This was my strategy, y'all, when I had the fruit truck was I had to come home to eat dinner with grandma because I couldn't afford to eat because during the day, I you ever heard the term, don't get high on your own supply? Oh, supply, yeah. I was, I was selling fresh fruits and vegetables. So if I ate the fresh fruit, I'm eating my profit. I only <laughs> ever made $50 profit on that truck in two years. My best day. Profit, wow. $50. Best day. <laughs> and what happened was I would go home at 7, chill with my grandma. 7.30, we watch Will of Fortune. It was a, like we would watch Will of Fortune. <laughs> Kick it. Then I go right back out in the streets, bro. Now I'm scrap metaling. Like, I'm doing that every night, bro. I would go clean the gym. And, bro, it was it was rough. I wake up in the morning freezing, no heat in the truck. But I realized that if you stop, it's harder to stop than it is to keep going. Like, yeah. you ever see somebody homeless and there's no fault to home? I help the home. But I feel like it's harder to sit outside all day to do that than to be like, yo, maybe – uh. And I, and y'all, please, I hope that don't sound wrong because I, you know, how people try to cancel you for. So, I feed uh, the homeless, but I yeah, feel like nah. it's more difficult to sit back and do like try nothing than it is for you to get out here and, and turn on a YouTube. And I'm not referring to homeless because they may don't have, but it's to pick up a book to go do something. Like it's right. harder. So I just, yeah, bro, nah, I made I agree. up in my mind that, bro, I'm gonna make this thing work, but I can't pick one time, bro, because I all of the times was. This is a part of the story. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I think another one I want to share this is we just paid, uh, what's my man name? We just paid him $160,000. What's my man name? Uh, David Goggins to come to our event. Oh, right, right, right. An hour. And it dawned on me. I get paid thirty, forty thousand 40000 to speak for people, right? Thirty grand average right now is going to go up to 50, y'all. So if y'all want to just book me without sales, it's a 30-pack. Right. It's really, no, it's 50. No, I keep, <laughs> my man my man said he about to give me 50 so to come speak. So it's a 50-pack moving 50 forward. Ball. But anyway, um, I say all that to say, bro, we paid that man, JP, because it's a story. He, right. he used to get beat by his dad. Mine was beat up like, he was fat. He was overweight. All of this crap that happened. He, we paid that man for his story for him to sit down and come literally just talk, tell of his story. So right. I need people to understand whatever you're going through, like God is giving you those toughness, those things so you can go back and repeat it. Like yeah. I believe, I don't, I know when you, when you got with your brand, you had 11 cent or $11 and like that is, you won't trade that story because that right. is now, now that you make the money you make and the impact you're doing now, it's like, oh, but you came from betting eleven dollars on you. Like mm -hmm. so I need everybody who's going through some stuff right now. Keep going. It's yes. gonna be a part of your masterpiece in a year or five years or ten years. You're gonna be so excited to talk about all of that crap you Man, went through. I'm trying to tell you because the thing is this, bro, is like I remember it because now that I'm thinking about it, like I remember when I sent that money because I had ten thousand dollars and two pennies in my bank account. I sent ten thousand to Corey, had two pennies left. Never once did I think like, oh, let me tell Corey I don't got the rent money or I don't know how I'm going to eat tomorrow. Like I just knew that the next day I was going to make something happen. I didn't have a choice. But I think that sometimes we got to put ourselves in those situations because like I believe that humans are motivated by like one of two things, either inspiration or desperation. But mm. it's very difficult to be motivated by inspiration because you can be inspired, but you won't be motivated to like get up off your behind. You know what I'm saying? But if you put yourself in the back against the wall, you have no choice but to move forward. So like I, me personally, and I know you do too, Neil, I done spent maybe 75,000, almost 100,000 this year alone in just personal development, just constantly putting myself in a position of discomfort because, you know, and Myron says that too, like where there's no uh what do you say like where there's no tension there's no transformation or something yeah, like that something like that it's like disruption before yeah, intention, but... I think. Mm -hmm. so i'll be constantly like i remember and this is the thing too bro because i'll be telling people like even if it's ten dollars or a hundred or a thousand just invest in yourself because like it doesn't get 
easier. You just get better and stronger at making that decision. Because I remember when it was my last when I had 10,000. Then it was my last when I had 1,000. Then it was my last again when I had 1,000. Then it was my last when I had 30,000. So then now I'm investing 75,000. So it never stops. It just only gets bigger. But the only way you build that muscle is by investing in yourself. Because look at Elon Musk. You make a bunch of money in PayPal and you put hundreds of millions of dollars in SpaceX. He put his last in it, but it was at that big number. So it never stops. It just, you get better and you get stronger when you make that decision. And now you're just more comfortable betting on yourself. But most people never get started in betting on themselves because they think everything's a scam or they asking what the cost of everything is. Mm. And I know you talk about that a lot, like scam still confused about money you asking what the cost is how much does it cost you not to do it like <laughs> hey the question some people really got to ask is how much does it cost to stay in the same spot you are now next year it costs too much bro like for you if you i would be so mad at you if you are where you at right now next year in the same time that means right. something you didn't do over the next year exactly. i'll be so pissed off at myself if i'm in the same exact position a year from now that yeah. means i didn't do nothing bro Right. I was watching this uh document uh this video with uh, with Kev Hart, uh Cat Williams. Uh and he was talking about, man, listen, if you've been selling weed for 10 years, man, you need to upgrade. It's time right. to start selling coke. I, I was not, but I'm like, yo, if you've been doing the same thing, and, and this is no shade to nobody, but if you haven't changed, it's time to make a change. Right. And and Alex Hermosi, man, my guy, he said one of the greatest things you'll ever invest in. It's the S and me 500, not yeah. the S and P, not stocks, not crypto, not real estate. All of them are amazing investments, but the greatest investment you will ever make is yourself. That's a fact. And uh, bro, I was talking about this with someone the other day. Cause I remember when I was like in a position where I was, bro, I don't know about you, but I used to like hoard my money, like just hold on to it and never do nothing with it. And then one thing I realized is like, every time I hold on to the money, one i only get to keep what i already have so it never grows and then also i never like i never can receive anything nor can i give and i can't give value or anything so then i realized once i opened my hand up and started investing in myself then i was able to not only give and invest in myself but also receive and get something back and that really changed something for me and i was thinking about it because one of my homies was like he had his last like a thousand dollars and he was like about to get into some program for like 500 or something like that he was like should i do it and I asked him, I said, bro, honestly, if you keep that money in your bank account, what's going to happen with it? He said, I'm probably going to spend it or I'm going to get 0. 0.001 interest on it. And I said, if you put it in that program, mm -hmm. does it have a chance of multiplying if you do it? And he's like, yeah. So I said, what do you think is a better decision? Keep 500 of your thousand dollars and then spend it or spend 500, invest 500 in a program. And at least it has an opportunity to multiply. And then that kind of like shifted his mindset on because most people would just keep it and then it gets spent rather than giving it a chance at least to multiply. Hey, bro, it's end? so crazy you say that. It's like I got Jillian. So Jillian meets me. I charge her like a thousand dollars for this program I did for me and Sony. It was like a grand. She didn't mm -hmm. have it. She was broke. And she didn't have it. She was broken. She would just talk about how, um, and it's so pop. Like she, I, I told her about PayPal credit. She didn't have no money, bro. She said, <laughs> I don't got it. So I told her about PayPal credit. She went and got the PayPal credit, right? She was able to go ahead and start with my program. When she started with the program, bro, she had nothing, no business, no anything. She just said, um, she said, it's funny. I should even go do this, but I, I might go to my garage and actually get a box she sent. But more of the story, she didn't have no money. I told her to play about getting a paypal credit she 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 has her daughter got all this great hair she's been making natural hair care products forever bro mm -hmm. i said yo why don't you start your own natural hair care product bro the first product that she sent me bro was horrible bro i'm talking about <laughs> white bottle i'm talking about you know bootleg bro right but the problem with, that i know bro with a lot of our people is bro is that we are trying to start at the end instead of the beginning meaning we never right. start uh, Justin, because we want that thing to be so perfect when we get started. So what you do is you decide not to do anything because right. you want perfection. It's funny. I want to share this with y'all. I want to finish the story with her. I want to just show y'all. Here's the first Circle of CEO logo that we were gladly wearing. I'm talking <laughs> about uh, he wore, he, he, Alex drew it with a pen or a pencil and we wore it. 
I'm talking about <laughs> this was the logo. Now y'all see what it looked like, but it looks a lot different than this. But guess what happened? We started with this logo. And as a collective, we were able to generate millions of dollars in our business partnership. But a lot of you not starting because you want to start perfect. Right. So to talk back about her, y'all, fast forward, she started her hair care product, right? I didn't talk to her for years later. I'm talking about I finally seen her. Then she ended up getting in my mastermind, right? She mm -hmm. gave me $75,000 to be in my mastermind. She's like, yo, you made me so much money from just helping me just start. And now right. she, she made over two or three million dollars last year in her business, bro. That's selling crazy. her hair care products, though. And, bro, like, that's the thing. Like, Start. the thing that you got to do is get it right, then get it, like, get it going, then get it right. Get yeah. it going first, then get it right. Like, people be stuck in analysis paralysis, and I feel for them, too, because, like, even when I first got started, there's so much information out there. YouTube, Google, Instagram, TikTok, and people don't know where to get started, bro. If you're thinking about, like, where to get started, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. First thing I did was I went on YouTube, and I found one person that was in the position that I wanted to be in. And Neo shared this with me, too. He was like, don't take advice from people. Don't take money advice from people that you don't want to trade bank accounts with. So all of my homies was like, bro, don't do that. Like, you don't want to get into the da-da-da. You don't want to do this and that. But I'm like, I don't want to trade bank accounts with you, so I'm not going to take your advice on this one. Let me go ahead and look forward to YouTube. So I'm looking at this dude. He had a clothing brand. He did $4 million in 30 days. So I vetted him out, made sure it was true. And then I started to look at his free information. And I cut out everybody else. So I picked one person that was vetted that has done what I wanted to do. And then I started to immediately apply their his free information. And you got to have a, like a 72-hour implementation rule for yourself. Anytime mm, somebody that's good. You, Talk about that. That's powerful. Anytime you get some advice from one of your mentors or the person that you're focusing on, you got to apply it within 72 hours or don't talk about it no more. Because I be telling my homies that too. Yo, my boy said he just ran this play. I said, when he tell it to you? Oh, about four or five days ago. I said, oh, bro, you got to execute that within three days or don't even talk to me about it because you're not really serious about it. So I took his free information, implemented it within 72 hours, started making money. Right when I made a little bit of money because I was learning ads from him, I took a little bit of the profit. He had a $100 coaching call, $100 coaching call from the same person. Got on the phone with him. He started looking at my ads. Then uh, next up, uh, he had a thousand dollar program, a thousand dollar program for him after I made a little bit of profit. So then now I'm making a ton of money and I'm like, OK, like this is what's up. But now I'm going into 5K event, 7,500 event, 24,000 program. And I'm just constantly investing in myself because, like you said, like one of the best things you can invest in is obviously yourself, because if you invest in the, you know, the S&P 500, you might get a seven to 10% return. But if you invest 25,000 into yourself, you might be able to triple or quadruple your income. So that's a much better investment. But for anybody that's thinking about it, like I remember looking at my ad campaigns when they were set up and I told myself, I was like, bro, if you don't press go on this campaign, you ain't never going to do it, bro. So like, you, I'm, someone is listening and they on the edge and like just bro trust us bro just get started get going and then get it right after bro they'll change your life I'm trying to tell bro, you pair it bro commit first figure out the right that's <laughs> been my secret hack bro i just be i'll be running circles around people on the idea but i just commit first figure out the rest later i say i'm gonna do it and then i figure that crap out man that's a fact because look and i got that from you and i applied that too a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you an instance when I applied that and it made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm going to just give you all an instance. Neo hit me up. Neo say, Justin, bro, I want to do a challenge with you. I said, cool. I knew on the back end it was going to be a done for you product and it was going to be a high ticket product. I said, damn. I said, OK, well, first of all, I've never invested twenty five thousand myself. I need to go invest twenty five hundred for twenty five thousand myself. So I feel comfortable charging people twenty five thousand because I know the value that I bring. So, boom, I had to go do that. Then I'm like, damn, I don't got no done for you product this, like at all on the back end. Neo, like, bro, I got the flyer made the dates, March, this, this and that. We got to be on go mode. I said, OK, cool. So then. I put together a done for you product and I committed to the challenge because I had an opportunity to not do it. But I said, no, I want to do it with my boy, Neil, and I'm going to commit to it. And it's going to force me to make a done for you product that we now sell on the back end of everything that we have. So if I would have never committed, it would have never happened. And when mm, we did that powerful. challenge, we did, we did really great. Powerful, bro. And now that's the back end product on one of your uh, extensions, ladder of ascension. Exactly. Yeah, that's my, that's the final thing on my ascension ladder.
crazy, bro. Yeah. I tell people, bro, when they commit, you don't you don't understand when I say you, not you. People don't mm -hmm. understand the commitment that you're making, what it may do for you later. Sometimes right. the commitment you're making right now isn't about now, it's about later. Right. Like some of y'all are not gonna get the return that you're looking for now, but you might in a year where oh crap, I finally I realized why I had to do that. Yeah. So I realized y'all, I like we made millions of dollars doing a webinar. I didn't realize that I was really doing a webinar, Justin, because that actually made me a better speaker. Mm -hmm. It actually made me a better communicator. Like, right. I didn't realize when I was doing it every week for two and a half hours, not, I wasn't looking just the income I was generating, but now I look back, they like, yo, you speak so good. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I'll be telling people, y'all, I believe in the, the speaking coaches and all of that, but the best way to become a good speaker is put your reps in. That's a fact. Like, the, the reps is like, I'm sure from you doing a webinar every week now, your speaking capabilities, I, I don't even, I know they have enhanced. Right. 1,000%. Just from why? Because you're doing it every week. It made me a better speaker. It made me a better marketer. Right. It made you learn how to get people in the room. Exactly. Like, it, it teaches you several different things that you really can't get unless you're just doing it. So when people like, y'all, Marcus Y. Roger, if anybody don't know, a little hat, um, that's one of my first speaking coaches. Mm -hmm. And what I used to do with Marcus, y'all, was it's so funny. Uh, I used to get booked to do speaking in jobs, and I would hire him. I'd say, bro, here's the hack. All we got to do is this. I'm going to go speak first. I'm going to jack it all up. You just come behind me. You clean it up, and we good. All right. Y'all, that's basically what we did. I went to Kutztown, St. Joseph. We would go do that at all the schools, y'all, because I knew I was going to go chop that crap up. I wasn't that great. But guess what? That's the other part of having people around you that are strong where you're weak. So yeah. what I was able to do was just I learned. So Yeah. Nah, that's a fact. Like, And that's the thing, too, because when you said that, it kind of reminded me about, like, like, college and school because – I'm thinking about, like, I became a better speaker by just speaking every week, like you said. But then a lot of us, you know, I you know, I fell into the trap. I went to school, and I, I was learning about business and stuff like that. But I'm learning from somebody who has never had a business ever, and they can't even update the textbooks fast enough to talk about Facebook ads and Instagram ads and stuff like that. So what I realized was that you don't learn business by reading books. You learn business by doing business. And mm -hmm. when I realized that, I said, oh, I'm just, I'm just here to network. And now that I'm here to network, I got to go actually do business. It's the same thing as like, you don't, you don't get swole by reading about push-ups. You got to do them. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know? <a> fat. <laughs> you will not get swole by reading about, you will not learn how to swim from YouTube. You got to put both feet in that water and go. Right. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Man, we, we can't keep cooking them like this, man. We got to hey, chill bro. out, bro. Hey, look, I appreciate you tapping in, bro. I'm going to get out. I'm going to go show them that package, and I'm going to get out of here. But I appreciate you uh, tapping in with me, my guy. All right, I'll but I'll catch you uh, very soon. Oh, safe flight back, bro. All right, but I'll see you. All right, bro. Peace. Yeah, y'all, man. So powerful, man. Powerful. Y'all, I actually want to show y'all this. Let me see if this come up. I wanted to show y'all this, right? I don't know if uh, Justin is here, uh, still here, but I want to show y'all this really quick because it made me for some reps. So uh, I want to show y'all this. And if y'all got value just from me and Justin being on the call, somebody say I did. <laughs> 